Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and we are in January of 2022, so I'll continue to say Happy New Year to you, and it's gonna be a good year because I am working once again with one of my favorite brands in the world, better than Bouillon, I love them. I, you know that I love them. I, I, raise your hand if you love better than Bouillon. Yeah, I see you raising your hand right over there. I see it, I see it. So being that it's January and it's frigid out there, I mean, it is cold right now, what better time is there than to make a soup or a chowder or chowder? You know, it depends on where you're from. Either way, it's gonna work just fine. You can say what you want. Potato, potato. Speaking of which, there's usually potatoes in the chowder and there'll be some in this one, but I digress. Today, I'm going to focus on their wonderful ham base. Better Than Bouillon makes a ham base. Way more than just chicken, vegetable, and beef broth. We got ham. We have lobster, we have chili, they have a plethora of other flavor varieties that they offer, but today we're focusing on the ham because guess what we're gonna do today? One of my favorite sandwiches in the world is a ham and cheese sandwich. So, you know what? We're gonna turn that into a chowder. Ham and cheese chowder with literally eight ingredients. Technically, you can even use less than that in the Instant Pot and you're gonna have such a flavor, flavor experience in your mouth. You're not gonna believe that you only use this few ingredients in the recipe and it's quicker than quicksand So they say you are what you eat and I am a little bit of a ham So we're gonna go right to the instant pot and make the most amazing ham and cheese chowder Maybe the only one you've ever had featuring the one and only better than bouillon ham base. Let's ham it up so one of the key players to a chowder is typically some potatoes. And I like to use just typical Idaho russet or whatever baking potatoes for this. But you can also use baby potatoes and cut them into pieces and keep the skins on that way. However, if I'm going to use an Idaho type potato, I'm going to want to peel the skins and I'm going to dice these up. Just like that, into pieces about yay big. And by the way, this is about uh, a pound and a half worth of potatoes. You can use a pound if you want less. You can use two pounds if you want more. Or, guess what? You can use some cauliflower instead if you want to be low carb. Uh, because, you know, potatoes aren't exactly the most carb friendly thing to have, but they are wonderful in a chowder. Let's move on to the ham. So, this wouldn't be ham and cheese soup, obviously, without the ham. And what I wanted for this is any kind of ham you like. You can use any type Black Forest, Virginia, honey baked, whatever. But what I did is I went to the deli and I just asked them to cut me about three, six slices. So, this is a one and a half pounds of ham. So, that's about a half a pound each. Because what I want to do now is I want to just simply cube this up. And I could do that with a knife. But, you know, since I have magical powers, at least editing ones, we're just going to snap this up. And there we have it, all nice and diced. Perfect. That's exactly why you want them to cut it like that. If your deli, uh, about a quarter of an inch or so thick per slice, because then you can dice it up into perfectly sized cubes. All right, let's move on. Now, if you watch my videos, you know that I don't normally show me making broth beforehand, but I'll tell you, it's so important for this one because this is what's going to send it over the edge. I am using for this, guys, Better Than Bouillon ham base. You see that? They make ham base, they make so many flavors, and it's just spectacular. And obviously, for a ham and cheese chowder, you gotta use ham base, right, to give it the maximum flavor. So what I wanna do is I wanna add in one teaspoon of this, this base, look, let me show you. See, it's a base, it's one teaspoon of this, plus one cup of water equals one cup of broth. So I'm gonna use four cups of broth, so that's four cups of water, and, yep, four teaspoons of the base. It's as simple as that, really. Now, because we're going to be pressure cooking this, the water doesn't have to be boiling when you mix it in. I just use hot water from the sink, you know, that's fine, or even lukewarm water. And I've added my ham base, and I'm just going to give it a little stir, let it dilute a little bit in there. And again, don't worry if it's not completely diluted right now, it's all going to happen when we pressure cook. And what I just did is the hardest part of this recipe, and as you can see, it wasn't exactly hard. Just wait and see, this is so easy. Let's move on. And so to the Instant Pot, I've just added in that wonderful ham broth, my potatoes, and a quarter of a cup of sherry wine. But if you don't like wine, Wine, that's just fine. Instead, you can add another quarter of a cup of the broth, but I like the, the wine in there because I feel like it adds even more amazing flavor. It elevates it, but again, it's completely optional. Just add another quarter of a cup of the ham broth. No big deal. All right, we're ready to pressure cook. I'm gonna secure my lid. Make sure that my valve is in the sealing position. So now let's hit the pressure cook button and we want to go for five minutes at high pressure. I'm only pressure cooking the potatoes, which happens rapidly in a pressure cooker. No ham because we don't want it to overcook. 
So I like this chowder thick. And because we only have some broth in the pot and potatoes right now and some wine in there, uh, it's not going to be obviously very thick when I open the lid after we've released the pressure. But you can make anything thicker with the magic of a cornstarch slurry. And I'm going for this one. I like this one on the thicker side. It's going to take three tablespoons of cornstarch. Looks kind of like confectionery sugar or confectioner sugar, powdered sugar, whatever. And combine that with equal parts cold water, so three tablespoons of cold water. And I'm just gonna stir it around so it goes from a thick consistency to a nice smooth one. And speaking of which, with cornstarch, you never wanna just dump the cornstarch directly into a large pot of like liquid because what will happen is it'll just ball up. You need to temper it with equal parts water first and mix it and combine it until it forms a slurry, which is exactly what this is. Then that completely alleviates any worry of it just clumping up and not properly thickening. All right. And now that our pressure cooking cycle is complete, I'm gonna finish it off with a quick release. Here we go. And the pin just dropped, so we're gonna take that lid off. Now I wanna bring this pot to a bubble because I wanna add my cornstarch slurry. Now I'll hit the cancel button, and then hit the saute button, and then make sure I'm on the more or the high setting because I wanna bring this pot to a bubble. And it's always best to add a slurry to a pot that's bubbling. All right, here we go. Pour it and stir at the same time, and you're gonna see it's gonna thicken up into very much like a chowder-like consistency. You see that? Pretty thick at this point. But we're not done yet, don't worry. It's not gonna be just like this because this is not a chowder without some cream. Now alternatively, for a thinner chowder, just add one to two tablespoons of a cornstarch slurry. That's one part of each, the cornstarch and the water mixed together. And if you want a thicker later, you can always thicken it, but I like it really thick, this chowder. And I wanna add in two cups of heavy cream or half and half. You can also use a non-dairy milk, like almond milk, soy milk, whatever you want. I'm gonna optionally add in about five to six ounces of a garlic herb cheese. You can find this in the fancy cheese or charcuterie section of your market. I also have a recipe on how to make this myself and I'll link that, but this is optional. It just gives it a nice extra garlicky, creamy touch. You don't have to add it. And then in batches, I'm gonna add a pound or about four cups worth of a shredded cheese of your choice. In this case, I'm mixing together some cheddar and Monterey Jack and some Swiss cheese because really however you like your ham and cheese is what you want to do with the cheese. You can do Gouda, you can do whatever you want. In some batches and then just whisk this around inside the pot. And there we go. We're looking like a chowder now, aren't we? Reserve some of the cheese if you want to top on your bowl when you plate. I've already done that. And like the cornstarch, if you want to have a little bit less cheese, you can always start with two cups and work your way up. But again, I like this really cheesy and really hammy. It's almost going to be like, like a French onion soup type of cheese, but like infused into the soup itself. It's amazing. All right, now that we're nice and whisked up here, and everything seems to be melted, look at this. Oh my gosh. Look at how cheesy the soup is. This is going to be on another level. Woo! Okay, next up, that wonderful ham. Add it right to the pot and stir that in with everything else. You've heard of folding the cheese. Well, here we're folding the ham into the cheese de soup. You know what I mean. And that, my friends, is a ham and cheese chowder. And now I'm gonna kill the heat. And guys, look at how cheesy the soup is. You see that it's like cheese strands in the soup itself. It's truly like a ham and cheese sandwich, but in a soup. I am so excited to try this. You have no idea. It's gonna be incredibly comforting, incredibly rich, incredibly delicious, and perfect for the winter. All right, and there's a bowl, and here's my chowder. Guys, this is a thick, cheesy, amazing chowder. And look at that, I dripped a little bit on my cutting board. Right off the finger it goes. I mean, this is literally, uh, look at how, it's like, I have to show you. You'll see for yourself. And we are ready to serve. Look at this comfort in a bowl. And you got potatoes in there, you got ham, you got cheese. Ooh, just stir it around. Look at that extra cheese I put on top. It's just gonna be ridiculously amazing. Hammy, cheesy, potato-y, let's do it. All right, my friends, here it is, the soup. Look at, do you see the cheese? I'm not kidding when I tell you this is a ham and cheese soup, it, just like a sandwich. Here we go. Oh my God. Oh my. Okay, ham and cheese sandwich. Why not a little bit of garlic toast to go in there, huh? Just a little bit. Scoop it up even. Mm. Mm. I can't even, like, this is literally the most comforting soup you could have on a chilly winter's day. It's almost like an aligo, which is like potatoes that stretch with cheese. 
granted the potatoes are still very much intact, so it's really just the cheese combined with the chowder and then that, oh, <laughs> ham and cheese chowder. Richard, you gotta try this, you, you gotta try this. Here he is, right. give it a try on this wonderful day. This looks really good. Oh my God, it smells amazing. Yeah, tell me what you think of that. Mmm. <laughs> wow, that is like <laughs> cheese. Yeah, and ham. And ham. Lots of ham, lots of cheese, but that's how it's gotta be, right? When you do a ham and cheese chowder, yeah. that's how it's, look at that. QB. <laughs> this is really good. It's like the best ham and cheese sandwich without the bread. Ex except you can totally add some garlic toast if you wish. Yeah, you mm -hmm. See, get yourself some garlic toast and if you wanna just, you know, leave it in the bowl. Great. And then salt. You can let it sog a little bit in there and just keep going and I think he's gonna take it away from me now. No, I think that's, that's what he usually does when I have him come on here. It's his payment. Guys, what can I tell you? It's as easy as it gets and it's as absolutely delicious as it gets. And guys, eight in Eight ingredients. I, my, I, what can I tell you? My, my finger situation sometimes when I try to do that. It's I'm not as easy as others doing that. Eight ingredients. Can we make that a little easier? Eight ingredients in the pot. With the star player being that ham better than bouillon base. I love this stuff. It makes this chowder and takes it to the next level. Of course, if you can't find this exact flavor, there are plenty of other better than bouillon brand flavors you can find in the market that will also make this taste great. But if you can find the ham, you can get it in online. If you can't find it in the market, go for this, for this recipe. It is a ham and cheese chowder after all. And you can find it at betterthanbouillon.com online, by the way. Guys, if you enjoy these recipes, check out my cookbooks. The Step-by-Step -step Instant Pot Cookbook, the original orange one, and the blue one, the lighter Step-by-Step -step Instant Pot Cookbook, which this recipe wouldn't be in the lighter book, but I, I don't know, I might have to do another book now because this thing is beyond amazing, and simple, and easy, and like, eight ingredients, come on! In fact, two of those ingredients, being the sherry and the garlic herb cheese, are technically optional. I mean, I think they really enhance it, but you don't have to add them in there. You can just use a quarter cup more broth and just leave out that herb cheese completely, and you're gonna be fine. It's gonna still be delicious. Also check me out at facebook.com slash pressurelovecooking and give that page a like for any time new recipe comes out, deals on items, tips, uh, if I can make you laugh, wonderful. Uh, also at Pressure Love Cooking on all the other social channels like Instagram and YouTube and stuff like that. Thanks again guys and the next time you really want to find somebody to please, <laughs> it's all about that chowder. We had a ham and cheese. Let's look at that. Mm.